Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel here on Think Tech, the 2 o'clock block on a given Tuesday. Make that May 30th. And we have with us a, a fellow who is actually going to do a show with us starting next Monday. His name is Richard Concepcion. Uh, he's going to do a show called Hispanic uh, Hawaii. We can be every two weeks starting, what, 3 o'clock next Monday. Uh, the the fifth yes okay so welcome to the show Richard nice to have you here oh no, thank you so much for the opportunity I'm so happy and excited to be part of this team <laughs> well tell us about yourself where you came from what you've been doing what brought you to this table <laughs> well uh, first let me t tell you a little bit about myself uh, I was raised in Caracas Venezuela born in the Dominican Republic uh, my family moved to United States in 1985. We used to live around West Point Academy, upstate New York. Um, dreams uh, to be a professional actor in 1985, very difficult things to do. Uh -huh. So I enjoyed the military when I spent 23 years. After many different deployments uh, from uh, this is Tarn, this is Shear, Afghanistan, Iraq. Oh, the whole thing. The yes. whole enchilada, as they say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I uh, decided to retire and stay here in Hawaii, this beautiful land of diversification of people, and, and I really love to be here. So I've been here for 14 years now. Yeah, yeah. So what do you find uh, about the, you know, uh, aside from the diversity, what do you found, find about Hawaii that, you know, meets your expectations? Well, what I like about Hawaii is not only just the people, but it's the land of opportunity. Anybody can come here and create something out of nothing. So uh, I, I fit in within, within that category when I retired from the military, uh, thinking, well, what are I going to do next? Yeah. So went back and see the things that I really love to do, which is, was acting. Yeah. So I went back to the principal or professional actors and as continue what I left behind in 1985. Mm -hmm. So after that, I got into radio, uh, television, and um, teach, coach, mentors, uh, many kids through Susan oh, Page, uh, become a, an actor. And Los maybe, Angeles. Maybe they would follow the yeah. career, yeah. So I ended up going to LA and got some uh, training to get myself a day, came back to Hawaii, and uh, was teaching uh, Susan Page modeling company. Oh, that's great, yes. that's, that's fabulous. So um, you, your ultimate aspiration is to make films, I guess. Well, my inspiration is about the freedom of expression and the art, but within the movie industry, or ah. the television industry. Okay. As we all express ourselves in many different ways, some people like painting, singing, writing. I like the television because I can get to the audience at, within a second. Yeah. Yeah, that's not so easy, actually. <laughs> it's not an easy task, but people like you and others that within the uh, television industry open the opportunity to others like me, so I'll be able to do what I really like to do. So what have you been doing in radio and television? Let's, let's uh, let our people know about your, you know, your ramp up to where you are now and what you're doing now in terms of radio and television. Well, I, I work uh, as a co-host in the Alma Latina show, which is a KPRP 650 AM, which is one floor below here. Yeah, this uh, building is filled with media of one kind or another. <laughs> yes. Uh, it's Pioneer Plaza downtown, at the core of downtown. Yes. <laughs> so I'm with Nancy Ortiz. Uh, she's the host of the Alma Latina show. And together, uh, we create uh, what she created, the Alma Latina show. I'm the co-host, and I do... Uh, everything and anything that I had to to get the community involved through radio mm -hmm. and also um, created the Latin Connection which is a television show through Olelo Channel 53. Mm -hmm. uh, How it's, often does that it's, play? It's happen every Tuesday mm -hmm. which is today at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. you can watch it. Uh, today's show is about brain injury, PTSD, uh, ADHD oh, and any things that you can do yeah. to exercise your brain, just yeah. like we exercise our body. Yeah. But the, the show is all about entertainment, education, culture, and opinionators. So it's not necessarily, neither of these shows is necessarily limited to Latino issues? No, it's not limited to the Latino issues. Uh, the reason in name Latin Connection, because I'm Latino, yeah, I like, like to get people connected. Yeah, yeah. So that is the reason Sure, but we've had that same experience, you know, I mean, you start out with a fairly narrow 
perspective and you title the show something fairly narrow but then over time you get to meet people you get to talk about and read about hear about other issues and so you sort of migrate out of that out of that narrow channel into other things it sounds like that's what's happened with you well we, with the Latin connection we focus with a lot of activity that happened within the Latin community we take that and we put in channel 53 for those that are Latino to enjoy and those that are not Latino they get enriched with the Latino culture. Yeah. Uh, we do from interview to go to different events and do interview as well in, at different locations. So, uh, they, so it's a produced show. You take your camera out. Yeah, we you get some footage outside. You come back and make, and make a show for a level. Incorrect. And uh, we have a crew that we go places and do things, and we create a show in and out the studio so it's not just always in the studio. It's an hour long show. It's a half an hour half show. Half an hour show. Half an okay. hour show. It's still a lot of work. Yes, it's a lot of work. Uh, the, the important is to get to the audience what they wanted to see, what is really happening within the community. Uh, also have the opportunity to go to Cuba just to bring oh. to not only just Latino, but no Latino Hawaii, what is happening in Cuba. Yeah, that's so interesting. So you went there specifically for the show, right? For the show, It yes. wasn't just a tourist experience. You no. wanted to bring back some payload for your audience, huh? Correct. Uh, what I do sometimes, I go into the website and uh, I put a quest in there, you know, like through Latin Connection High we have in Facebook, <laughs> and, uh, and I just put it out. Who would like to know a little bit about Cuba? And the response was, Amazing. Oh, yeah, really? So I they didn't expect this to come from Hawaii, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I ended up going to Cuba, and I was able uh, to bring a program that I call it Cuba of Yesterday and Today, showing the history of Cuba and the change that Cuba has made from oh, yesterday so interesting. into today. Through your eyes. Yes. I mean, you're the producer. You're, you're conceptualizing what's happening here. Correct. That's not a pun on your name, by the way. <laughs> 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 so anyway, this, no, that's fan fantastic. So tell us a little more about the content of that show about Cuba. Well, about Cuban show, we dedicated uh, first uh, to understand the people in Cuba. It is 12 different rules that we had to follow in order for us to go into Cuba. And it, it was kind of complicated, so I was able to choose one to call it from people to people. We required to meet people. Uh, under that rules, we was able to go into Cuba, uh, experience what all the people had experienced from the time of the revolution and to the new generation that never had experience of the revolution, but see how now Castro brother is in charge and yeah. uh, Castro is gone, yeah. uh, able to witness uh, President Obama coming into Cuba yeah. in April 11, 2015, yeah. and open a new opportunity for new hopes into that country. Yeah, so did you find the people hopeful and friendly and, you know, welcoming to Americans and to, uh, you know, other Hispanics? Uh, to my surprise, uh, they really loved the American people. And they had so much hope for Cuba to open to just no halfway completely. Yeah. Uh, they are dying for a exchange of ideas, to catch up with the new technology that we have from, uh, from the website, from the internet to a new device. Uh, it's an awakening. It's, it's awakening. Yeah. But the new generation, they, some way, somehow, they're able uh, to follow with the train that is happening yeah. here in the United States. You know, though, they say that uh, when you, you know, take a place that has been sort of behind the eight ball for a while, and indeed Cuba has been, you know, isolated for a long time, and then you bring in, you know, new influences and new tourists who are spending money and all that, you, you threaten the fabric of the place. Um, and you, you know, you, to the extent that they have a beautiful thing, and I believe they do, uh, you threaten that uh, with with the tourism and the money and the new possibilities that that may lose the f fragile nature of what they've achieved over the past 50 more than that years. Yeah, that's a true statement, but they are open to new ideas, and that is the key to break the wall yeah, down yeah. and start it in, in a new way with new generation. Yeah. So. <laughs> If you look at the history of Cuba, and uh, it's deep in culture, it started way, way back in, in the 1400 with the Spain, uh, found Cuba and brought the slave into Cuba and used it as a, uh, a play for agriculture for sugarcane. Uh, 
then the United States want to take over the land. That's how we started the Spanish War. Sure, and so, sure. And, right. and it go along history. And um, for my surprise, uh, people really don't look back in the past. They want to look into the future. They do have a lot of pride on the Cuban uh, heritage and what Fidel Castro did for them. Uh, but on the side, they really can't say too much yeah. about the dark side all that time or the to their Castro. That's a really great idea that you went there. I wanted to go there, not for a show necessarily, but just for curiosity to see the reopening. And I think the reopening is happening at high speed right now. It's happening so yeah. fast. Uh, you can see uh, Air and B&B is there. Um, oh, really? Many, yes. <laughs> then they know they've they arrived. Know. <laughs> <laughs> and you see all, all the different cruise ships coming in from different places, from Europe or from Russia. It just a lot of people in Cuba right now yeah. trying to uh, see this beautiful old car from the 1930s, yeah. 1940. Right, before they disappear. Yeah. Before they disappear. <laughs> and all the houses that still in, in back in the days untouched. So working to move forward to to new future. Yeah. For my surprise, one thing that I was very surprised was that Fidel Castro, he was a, a student of law, and when he tried to change the country he was put in jail and when he was free he went to Mexico so I never knew that part of the story and that was very unique to me because he spent years in Mexico right, trying to get himself reorganized to come back and liberate Cuba to make where Cuba is today. I find that so often you know the, the developments in a person's life you know, tend to make him an activist jail is often part of that you know when they come out they have ideas they want to change the world and we want to change the world, too, with you. But we're going to take a, a short break first. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is Richard Concepcion. Uh, he's the host of our new show, Hispanic Hawaii. We're going to take one minute. We'll be right back. And we'll find out more about what he's planning. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Aloha. I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, every Friday at 3 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. We talk about things of interest to those of us who live here. And my past blogs can be found at kawilucas.com. Okay, I didn't listen. Aloha, my name is Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, where I talk to other shrinks. Did you ever want to get your head shrunk? Well, this is the best place to come to pick one. I've been doing this. We must have 60 shows with a whole bunch of shrinks that you can look at. I'm here on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock every other Tuesday. I hope you are too. Aloha. Okay, bingo, we're back. I'm Jay Fidel of Think Tech. We're here on Hispanic Hawaii. We're calling this show Introduction uh, to Hispanic, Hispanic Hawaii with Richard Concepcion. He's the uh, host of that show. And it starts playing next uh, Monday, the 5th of June at uh, 3 o'clock. So, uh, and Richard is a radio and television host, um, and he has done a lot, you know, in terms of the public media, and I think he is right on the same path that we are, trying to raise public awareness about things the community needs to know. And your community, you know, at least the, you know, the basic part of it is the Hispanic community in Hawaii. Can you talk about what that community is like? How big is it? Um, what sort of, um, you know, what sort of, um, what sort of, arrangement is it like? I mean, how many people, what are they doing? How strongly are they knit together? Well, let me start by telling you that I came to Hawaii in 2000. And uh, just like any other Latino go to a different location, the first thing we ask ourselves, where are the Latinos? Yeah. And for my curiosity, I find out the Latinos, they are not segregated here in Hawaii. Uh, you can go to New York, LA, Chicago, all the different uh, major city like Miami, and you can find that Latinos, they are segregated. So you can say, well, I'm going to, to the barrio uh, from Dominican Republic, or going to the barrio of Mexico, and you find them in different places. That's not the case here in Hawaii. Uh, but they, you know that back in the early 20th century, they, um, they brought in a number for the work on the plantations, they brought in a number of people from Puerto Rico. 
True. And there was a Hispanic community back when. I don't know how long they've lasted or whether they're still together, but they were, at the time, they were brought in together and they did form a community back then. And I, and I think it, that kind of got integrated within the community and the, the segregation kind of stopped as Latinos uh, got involved in the community and got marriage. We the sure. raised here in Hawaii. Sure. Uh, the last uh, count of the session viewers that we're looking was in 2010. And we found out the Latino population here had rose 38%. The fastest growing race in Hawaii which is the Latinos. Yeah. Uh, right now, we're roughly about 120,000 Latinos really? in Hawaii. So out of a population of 1.3, 1.4 million, that's pretty good. That's a substantial percentage. That's almost 10% of yeah, the population. Yeah, yeah. And that's officially. Uh, when you look into the unofficial count, because we had the militaries that bring Latinos into Hawaii, uh, you have civilian contractors that work for the military bring a lot of Latinos into Hawaii. Uh, it's roughly about 160,000 Latinos in Hawaii at any given time. When you add time. the military. When you the add the military. Federal government and all that. Yes. Uh, the only thing, you just can go in downtown and say, hey, I'm... Where's my Latinos? Because <laughs> you're not going to find it because we're part of the communities yeah. uh, as well. But for my surprise, uh, reading and analyzing uh, Latinos in Hawaii, and I found out the first Latino came into Hawaii was were back in the 1700s, 1740, six years after Captain Cook came wow. to Hawaii. What was their reason for coming? How did well, the circumstance? Well, the reason was a sailor who came, from, didn't want to be part of the difficult situation in Spain and he immigrated yeah. into into It was a good time to leave Spain. Yeah, yeah into <laughs> Hawaii. His name was Francisco Marin. Uh, he came into Hawaii and he was credited to be the first person who planted the first pineapple here in Hawaii. Is that right? Yes. And and, and you can he got, he got off the ship. He got off the ship. He got off the ship, <laughs> stayed here and made a and made a life. Yeah, yeah not only that, he, he was part of the King Kamehameha team about agriculture and natural medicine. So his word documented that this Latino was part of the great kingdom here in yeah, Hawaii. Yeah. So it's great influence of Latinos yeah. here in Hawaii. Is this the kind of thing you cover on your shows? Yes, and uh, and the show we we not only entertain but we educate. Uh, we also talk about where the first Mexican group came into Hawaii that King Kamehameha brought them in. That now we know then as a paniolo. Uh, in Spanish, it's pañuelos, because they want to use the color of the nose. Huh? Yes. Pañuelo, pañuelo. So, pañuelo must have been taken out of pan, pañuelo, no? Yes, it was taken out due to the, some of the words that we write in Spanish is, can be in the vocabulary of the alphabet or the Hawaiian. Yeah. So, it, it's, it's the, Very the interesting. Change. Yes. But then after that, uh, the Puerto Rico came in. Uh, uh, during that time, and the uh, 1900, the Puerto Ricans came to work in the sugar plantation. As uh, it's it's kind of weird how it happened because in Puerto Rico they had this huge tropical storm that damaged the the Puerto Rican island, and ah. King Kamehameha decided that he was going to help the Puerto Rican ah. because it was unemployed ah. so a lot of the uh, situation going economically. Ah. So he hired. Puerto Ricans to come in into Hawaii and take care of the land. Oh, that was in the 19th century then. That yes. was earlier than I thought. So if you, if you go back now, it's like uh, the Puerto Rico's descendants is, is roughly 38 percent, 36 to 38 percent, and from the Mexicans is about 26. And as we move forward to now, uh, you find uh, people from I mean, Venezuela, Dominican, Ecuador, Peru, Brazilian uh, from all over the place here. That's in, great. You know, I mean, Hawaii is, is, is a, a statement of diversity. And, uh, you know, I, I speak for everybody. I say we like diversity and we <laughs> like to have not only d diverse group, but we want to have them retain their culture also. And you're into that, I can tell. Yeah, we're into retaining the culture, but we want to, to share our cultures with others. And just not to be, this is my culture, this is our yeah, cultures, yeah, yeah. as we learn. Uh, from from the Hawaiian and other cultures here as well. Uh, for my surprise, I found people, they are professional hula dancers. They are <laughs> mixed with Puerto Ricans from descended from the time of the 1900s. Wow. Uh, you find That's professional cools that, that teach hula dances. <laughs> really? Yes. And so it's so deep in our culture here in Hawaii that it is difficult to separate. Sure, them. sure. <laughs> but you still have to retain it as, you know, as a 
something to rally around, something to connect people. Yes. So you mentioned before the show that you have a number of events coming up, and I guess those fall in the category of trying to identify and um, and express uh, creatively express the, the culture, the, the Latino culture, but also to share it with the rest of the community outside uh, the, the Latino community. One of them is uh, the, the Cinco de Mayo. Um, I, you know, I spent some time in Spain, so I call it uh, Cinco de Mayo. Cinco sorry. De <laughs> <laughs> one of them is the Spanish festival, and one is the Latino film festival. Can you talk about those festivals? Well, at the Cinco de Mayo, it was a great festival, a great opportunity for us to uh, not only to go out and drink and have a good time and eat a lot of Mexican food, yeah. but to share the culture, the tradition, the dance. What is the reason we celebrate the Cinco de Mayo? It, it got lost somewhere down the road that people say Cinco de Mayo is the biggest festival celebration in the United States, bigger than the 4th of it's July. Huge. It's huge because it become part of all you know, marketing and uh, money, economy, and booster, right? Yeah. But people like me, we try celebration. to... Yeah. It's a celebration. What is, uh, the, by the way, I remembered that the difference between the, the Latino uh, pronunciation and the Spanish pronunciation is Cinco versus Cinco. Right? Cinco, cinco yeah. yeah. So, cinco. so <laughs> what is Cinco de Mayo all about? <laughs> well, the, the whole thing is about celebrating when the Mexico army was able to push away the French army. Uh, back in the day, the French and the Spain had control a place they call it Puebla, which it was a territory control, but then the Mexico won the territory back. The Spain didn't want to fight, so they asked money from the Mexican, and so the Mexican paid in and they left. But the French army said, no, we're not taking any money from you, this is our territory. So they <laughs> got into the battle and they, and they fall, they fall hard, and the Mexico become victorious, uh, pushing the French army, and that's what we call it the Battle of Puebla. And that's what I'm here for to, every time we have the Cinco de Mayo celebration, go around and educate people where sure. the Cinco de Mayo is. Sure, you want them to remember, it's such yes. an important thing, it's not just a drink fest, it's to remember the history, it's sort of like Memorial Day yesterday, yes. we want people to remember why they're celebrating <laughs> Memorial Day. It's true. Yeah. So, okay, what about the Spanish festival? That's coming up now, right? Well, the Spanish festival, we celebrate it. It's a whole month that is dedicated to the, the Hispanic community. Yeah. And we do it every year. And so we do the same thing. We, we bring people from different Latino or, or Spain to bring their culture from food, traditional dance. Uh, we, we have hula dancers as well. We have Tahiti dancers. <laughs> Why? Because we have perfect Hispanic. The dance Tahiti's and sure. they, they are people that, so we all have, together. We all put it together <laughs> and we bring the community together. Uh, we one principle in mind is to share and educate our culture. Yeah. Of course, we dance. We uh, the mayors come every year. I uh, do an interview to the Point mayors event. every year. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it's a big event and uh, we do it. Uh, Every year, so Nancy Ortiz, she's the organizer, so we support her the same thing. She organizes Cinco de Mayo yeah. as well. Where is it? Where is the celebration? And it all depends. Uh, Sometimes we do it at the Fassi, uh, right there, right behind the mayor area, that open field. Uh, ah. We do it there. Sometimes we, ah. we go to Waikiki, whatever it is available during the time that we're going to do it. The last Cinco de Mayo we was able to do in Chinatown. Ah, uh, perfect. Yes. <laughs> So um, when's, the, when's the Spanish festival coming up? Are there dates for it? Well, right now we, we're looking back. We always do an October time frame because we celebrate the, the, the Hispanic month between September 15 and October 15. So between that time frame, we're trying to uh, gather uh, everybody in one location to celebrate culture. Yeah. So you're going to take a camera down there, aren't you? I mean, I know you're the organizer or one of the organizers. But you can take a camera down, you're going to bring back the, the clips, the film. Yes. And I hope you will show them here, as yes. well as your other shows. <laughs> yeah, Nancy, and let us all see Nancy what Ortiz is the organizer. She has a great and wonderful team, which I'm part of the team supporting yeah. uh, these great and wonderful uh, activities and events. And we always do that. We make sure we take the highlight of this event and put it on television to share with others who Great. might 
don't have the opportunity to make it there. Okay, and speaking of clips and film and video, you have the Latino Film Festival. Tell us about that one. Well, I'm, I will be on the organizer for the first Latino Film Festival. Uh, oh, it's the first one? Okay. Yes, yeah, first right. one. Uh, we're going to start it slow. It's going to be free and open to the public. Yeah. And, uh, and we take the cost and it's okay. This is the first one. Uh, the, the important is that many Latinos here in Hawaii, uh, they are part of the uh, filming industry. Um, they could be behind the scene, uh, maybe the editor, they work on the lights and they work in the sound, uh, they work as a host and they work as a cameraman. So it's a great and wonderful Latinos doing great thing for the film industry. Yeah. And a way uh, for me to recognize the effort uh, is by placing a, a film festival for the Latinos. Yeah. Uh, it's not only for a Latinos, anybody can bring it into the Latino because it's to share what all the filmmakers do as well. Yeah. Uh, so we want to start in September, our first one, uh, see how we do. Uh, how can I find out more about this? Is there a website? Uh, or are there multiple websites? What, well, that website is not running yet. Uh, we'll be running sometime soon to provide information, okay. location, and time where the field festival is going to okay. be. You're going to announce all of this on your show. Oh, right Hispanic here in our Hawaii. show. Yes. So take a look at camera one, Richard. And those are the people out there. It's a whole mix of people. They're watching us now. And tell them why they should tune in at 3 o'clock on Mondays, every other Monday, to, to talk about Hispanic, Hispanic Hawaii. Tell them why they should tune in. Well, I want to invite each and every one of you to turn in to Hispanic Hawaii with Richard Conception, I'll be your host. And the important thing is that we're going to share culture. We're going to educate and entertain ourselves about Hispanic culture, Hispanic activities, and not only the Hispanic culture and activity, but all the activities that happen here in Hawaii within our community. So you're going to like it. Don't miss it. You are going to like it. <laughs> Richard Concepcion, radio and television host and star, <laughs> and our host on Hispanic Hawaii. And this has been introducing him. Thank you so much, Richard. Oh, thank Great you for to talk me. to you. Thank you so much. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>